What's up guys, so this week we're going to animations and you can see here I already have one playing and this is what we're going to build up to and then do another couple examples just with different effects. So if that sounds cool to you, please give this video a like and subscribe. So before starting, there are timestamps in the description. So if you're looking for a specific part of what this video covers, then those will all be described down below. Also, I'm just going into the animation part. So if you're trying to learn how to actually plot or trying to learn how just Julia works, there's functions and there's a lot of arrays and tuples going on here. I also have other videos and you could you'll see cards appear in the top right, but I'm skipping all over all that. This is mainly just focused on animations. It's already assumed you know how to plot and assume that you know all those other aspects of Julia. Before I go into this, I just wanna say thank you to everyone that's been supporting the channel. Truly appreciate it. All the feedback is taken in and requests. I also have in my list of what I wanna do in the future and I have a lot of plans for what I wanna cover in the future. Also, I wanna thank whoever's been posting my channel on Reddit. I, I haven't been doing it, but someone has because I've been getting people from Reddit subscribing to my channel. That's super great. I appreciate it. It's signifier to me that you guys like my channel and are helping it grow as well. Of course, I don't want anyone to feel obligated to do that. If you want to show your support, a simple like is always appreciated. And let's go on with the video now. Okay, so to make animations, the first couple of things you want to make sure you have is plots. So that's the plotting library like we've used before. And then imagine magic. This is what helps with animations. If you don't have this, you may get some errors. Okay, now going to my initial conditions here, I have topography, which is related to my omega. This is my X starting position, X naught, my initial Y velocity, V naught, and then my initial X velocity, which is U naught. All these are used in my equations down here, X of T and Y of T, which will describe the position of that particle that you saw on the animation. Now going a little bit deeper in what these equations are, these are related to the Coriolis effect, which come from the fluid dynamics book by Cushman. I'm not gonna go much deeper into what these equations are besides that if you want to learn more about the Coriolis effect I point you towards the book the figures we're recreating here is figure 2-8 but really these equations are just so we have something to visualize and the Coriolis effect has a cool circular design to it so we can have some cool animations to it now going past that the time frame this is how long we're running our animation for and then we have x position, y position, which you can see here are my two equations and I have them solved out. Okay, and now this is the code for our animation. And it looks like a lot, but if you look a little closer, it's really just three lines. We have this animation is equal to at animate. We have this scatter plot, and then we have the end. Now looking closer at animate, here's a macro and saying for i and one to n, which n is the length of time. So each i value, so starting from one, going to the length of our time is a frame, and each frame is what's gonna make up our animation. And now in my case, what I'm doing is I'm plotting a point so I'm plotting that X position for that one frame and plotting it out. And then it's going to do the next animation, plot the next point, and then do the next point and do the next point. And because I don't have the exclamation point, it's not adding upon each point. It's just going to clear out the plot, replot everything again. And then you get your new animation and put all the frames together, which is going to lead to this GIF that will create the animation in that full video that we saw. Okay, so this code actually recruits the video that we already saw, but let's say we wanted to make it a little bit different. So last time we saw where each dot was being plotted, clear out, plot the next dot. So then we just saw the dot progressively moving around. But let's say we will actually want to see every dot get plotted out. Now I'm going to do the scatter with the exclamation point, which means it's going to plot each point, and then it's just going to add upon each plot and then plot everything out, and that will be our animation. And this is our new animation here. And you can see that because we have the exclamation point, each dot is just being appended upon. So the frame is just collecting all the, the plots as we progress through. And that is pretty much the animation here. It's three lines, essentially. We have the animation, what we're plotting out, and then the actual saving of the animation, which is this GIF function. Now you can see here, I have this other function here called orbit, and this is actually using a plotting macro. So this is the other aspect I wanna go into that can be used with the plots library. Now at the top here, I have two macros designs. One is the user plot, which is the orbit animation. And then I have this recipe, which is being fed that orbit animation. And then inside of the recipe, you can see I have all these parameters being called, which are pretty much all the parameters we called in our scatter design. 
Now, macros, I haven't fully gone into how they work in Julia, but a high level description is they're a generalized operation similar to the idea of a function. What's cool about macros in terms of the plotting library is you can use them to generalize how you make your plots. You can see here, I have all these specific attributes for this plot. So if I wanted to make several plots of this one plot, but putting in different sets of data, I don't have to type out all this stuff anymore. So I just feed in the data and it will plot it out. Now, the main reason why I'm talking about macros while we're going over animations is because when you're looking at the documentation, they always talk about the animations in terms of macros. So I thought it'd be good to go give a description of how these macros work and give you the tools to make your own macros if you needed to. Now also know that macros aren't something just specific to the plotting library. I've used them with the benchmarking library and you can also design your own macros. That's all other stuff. This is me talking in terms of the plotting library. Now, once again, going back into this, we have this X and Y, which is the arguments of OA, which is what's being inputted into this function F, which is being given from the orbit animation which is the macro that we designed. After that, we're designing all the other parameters that the plotting library uses. So the titles, the trajectory, x-axis, y-axis, marker size, marker color, all this stuff, which is all the same parameters that I use in the scatter plot. And then when I'm plotting out, I'm just putting the x and y in brackets because when you're plotting out, you always need to plot it out as a series type. And even though it's a dot, it has to be plotted out as if it's a series. So you have to put it inside of a list just so the plotting library doesn't crash on you. So just to show some variations, I'm going to make the marker color red in this case. And then I'm going to do this with the exclamation point. And this is going to do the same animation we saw before, but now that red, the dots can be red. And now we're going to be using the macro to plot out everything. Now down here, I'm just going to call the orbit function and now with the exclamation point. So we'll be adding upon each dot. And then I'm also going to call scatter and we're going to place a black dot right at the origin just to show that we can have these two interacting with each other on the same plot for the one animation. Okay. And you can see here, this is our new animation. So we have the red path being plotted out from the macro. And then this black dot is from that scatter that I added to the for loop. And that's pretty much it to animations. Like I said before, it is really just a minimum of three lines. You have your, your animation, the actual what you want to plot out, and then saving that animation. Of course, you can do it in terms of scatter and plot, but I also just wanted to show the macro just because that's what you see in the documentation. And I wanted to clarify any of that syntax if you guys are looking for more complex examples. Now, if you're more curious, I actually worked on that animation before. The first time I worked on it was in Python back in my previous lab. They have taken the whole Coriolis effect and trying to show the rotating frame versus the inertial frame and applied it even more to the lab setting where you can have these videos and have these cool effects that can just really show what's going on. Now, if you're curious about this video, I'll post it also in the link below. And this is also their website where they have a lot of tools and kits if you're an educator and trying to show a lot of this geoscience effects to your students. That is just a small little plug just for the previous time that I used to work in. Hopefully you liked all that. Animation is pretty much one of the big things I wanted to get to. Now that you guys have this tool, I can make animations more, especially for more of the physics stuff that I want to do in the future. And we can see a lot more cool effects happening. Okay. And that's what I have for you this week. Once again, I appreciate all the support and feedback I've been getting from you guys. If you like what I've been doing, please give this video a like and subscribe. The Twitter and IG links are in the description. I'll be posting weekly announcements about the channel. If you have any requests for what to cover in the future, feel free to comment in the sections below. Tweet at me at Twitter at DJ's Office Hours or email me at djsofficers at gmail.com. Hope you learned something new and I'll see you guys next week.